Um, it's really interesting you ask the question that way because there's almost a presupposition that, that L&D does not have a brand. And I can assure you it does, even though you might not be aware that it exists. Because the brand of L&D is what people talk about when you're not in the room. It's a lovely saying that Jeff Bezos from Amazon used. So what do they say when l and not there? How do they describe L&D? If you were to ask them, what do they, what do they think l and does? What would they say? Um, so go and do that. Go out, uh, talk to the people out there and ask them, what do you think l and does? What do you think our purpose in the organization is? What do we deliver? How do we do what we do? When you think of us, do you like what you think? Or is perhaps you just think we're an annoyance in the organization? So then the question arises, well, if we have a brand, whether we think of it or not, is where does it come from? And it comes from the touch points. It comes from every time uh, someone in the organization has an interaction with learning and development, or indeed from people outside the organization. So really there are three different constituents or audiences for that brand. One is the senior team, the business leaders. The other are the employees who are getting the services from L&D, and the other are externals, perhaps other providers or other people, other stakeholders who you might interact with. So that's where the brand comes from. That question kind of broadens out to how does a brand affect any organization or business? So why do you go and buy Nike shoes or Coca-Cola or, or an Apple uh, iPhone? Uh, a lot of that's based on the brand that you're aware of on what you think that brand represents. Uh, and a lot of people will just buy brand almost regardless of what the product itself, uh, what the specifications of that are in relation to other competitive products, they'll buy brand. So is your brand good enough that people will buy you? This question correctly assumes there's a gap between what L&D thinks its brand is, if it even thinks of brand at all, and what the perception of that brand is by others. And the reason is that L&D knows what it does, so they really only have touch points with themselves, whereas all of the other people that have touch points with L&D uh, are experiencing something completely different. And they're usually experiencing a subset of what L&D can offer. So therefore, the wider a set of services that L&D can provide are often completely unknown to, uh, to the consumers of those services. So you get this, this mismatch, you get people who aren't aware of everything that's on offer from a modern L&D department. The other reason there is a gap uh, is often that uh, things are moving so fast, what L&D is pro needed to provide is changing rapidly, and so therefore whatever brand is there is probably many, many years out of date. So there is an inevitable gap. So if we start thinking about how brand affects L&D, it's the same way that a brand affects any kind of business out there. In that if the brand doesn't give people a sense of who you are and what you do, they're going to be limited in what they're actually going to come and ask you for. Uh, if they want a blue widget but don't know that you supply blue widgets, they're unlikely to come and ask for one. They're going to go someplace else that they know already supplies blue widgets. So in a sense, your brand is competitive with all of the other places uh, that people can get learning type initiatives, whether that's Google uh, or external suppliers or even people from within their own uh, operational department. And then, so the question then arises, is their perception of your brand useful? Is it exciting? Do they think it's a beneficial thing to have? Or do they see L&D as almost a necessary evil? It's the, the compliance stuff. It's the things that they've got no other option. They've got to go to the internal L&D department to get. Um, and do they just go there or would they prefer to go somewhere else if they possibly could? Okay, improving the brand is not just a new logo and a new mission statement or purpose statement. Uh, what you've got to be doing is changing the touch points that people have so they change their perception. Now, of course, at those touch points, you are probably going to have a logo or a name or a mission or whatever. So it's not to say don't do those things. They are part and parcel of it. But what you need to do is develop a brand strategy in effect. So go and find some mates in marketing and buy them a beer and find out what they would do in terms of creating a brand strategy. And then from that strategy, start creating some tactical 
things that you can do, which effectively is what you can do at the touch points, which includes your existing touch points and new ones that you may choose to create to get new ideas across. Because the only people that are going to be able to communicate your brand to your audiences, all three of them, are you. It's not going to be anybody else that's going to do it. And in fact, in some ways, um, you need to do what you do so that it starts to go viral, so people start to say, hey, have you heard what's happened over at, at, at L&D? Now, the issue there is if you do just change your logo and your strap line and then don't do it, you're going to be branded as inauthentic. Okay, so there are three core messages here that I'd love you to take away and use. One is that you do have a brand, and you, you really do have a brand. So. Um, go find out what it is. The second is that brand has a massive effect on how successful you can be as an L&D professional or an L&D department. And the third is, go out there and change it. Work with it, measure it, uh, get proactive about it.